in summary, the evidence is clear from the studies that have been performed and now the review that was commissioned by the World Health Organization that cell phone radiation can cause cancer in animals and the types of cancers that occur are those that in, are in concordance with tumors that have been identified in human studies of mobile phone or cell phone users. My background, I had spent more than 28 years with the National Toxicology Program at the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences. I also was a participant on more than 70 chemical evaluations by the International Agency for Research on Cancer. With respect to the use of animal studies, Animal studies are used as a predictor of human risk, and this has been going on since uh, at least nine, before 1980. Public health agencies make use of animal studies to estimate the risk to humans and set exposure limits that would be protective of human health. Part of the reason for this is that every agent that has been identified as a human carcinogen is also carcinogenic in animals when adequately tested. Uh, there are a number of other reasons for uh, using animal models for prediction of human risk is because it takes up to 30 years to determine if an agent is not carcinogenic in humans from human studies. So rather than waiting to count the human bodies, uh, hu human tumor incidents from an exposure animal models are used in a predictive way to set exposure limits to prevent the occurrence of any high tumor rates. There is compelling evidence from hundreds of studies that show evidence of oxidative stress. Now, oxidative stress is a condition which is a precursor event to a number of diseases. One of those is cancer. Oxidative stress can lead to DNA damage, and DNA damage is an early event in the cancer process. So with the numerous studies that have shown evidence of oxidative stress, there is a very likely mechanism involved in which oxidative stress leads to DNA damage from DNA damage altered cell populations developed that have different growth characteristics than normal cells and eventually lead to a tumor. Oxidative stress is a likely early event in the carcinogenic process for radiofrequency radiation. Well, there's two things that, that the FDA and FCC should be doing. For one is they should be making people aware that there is a risk and not to have the burden on the consumer, the communication that if you are concerned, this is what you can do, that's not appropriate. It's appropriate for the agencies to say, there is a risk, this is what you should do. There are a number of things that people should do. One is minimize the amount of time you spent on a cell phone. Use speaker phone if you have to. If there is a weak signal, it is best to not use a cell phone because your phone is working harder to keep up a communication with the cell tower. Therefore, it's emitting more energy. Cell phones are not toys. They should not be used by children because the penetration of the radiation into a child's brain is much deeper than an adult's brain. And children's developing systems are more susceptible to damaging agents. We know this from numerous chemical studies that exposing a developing organ to an agent that is toxic or carcinogenic poses a greater risk. Secondly, now with the information provided in that WHO commission document, it is possible for the agencies to do a quantitative risk assessment similar to is done for environmental chemicals or occupational chemicals and derive an exposure limit that minimizes human risk, human cancer risk, to levels similar to that for environmental and occupational agents. The confirmation now by the WHO that exposure to radiofrequency radiation is linked to the induction of 
at least two different types of tumors in animals requires that there be a science-based standard for human exposure. The exposure limits to radiofrequency radiation, these are the emissions that come from cell phones or other wireless devices. Those limits are based on studies conducted in the 1980s, and the limits have been set on a threshold for a heating effect. They're not based on any strong scientific uh, evidence. Now with the WHO commissioned report that endorses the animal carcinogenicity, it's time to develop a science-based uh, exposure limit and move away from the assumption that the only effect occurs by heating because we are so well aware of numerous studies that are showing adverse effects below this heating threshold limit. And it is important that health protection be based on science, not on assumptions, because the assumption has been proven wrong from numerous experimental studies.